He doesn't even know what he knows. He claims he's from the 31st century. I'm Jessica. Everyone knows Limelight. The Fatal Five are coming! Hi, this is Mark Morrell from Toon Barn. We're here at WonderCon 2019. We're talking about Justice League versus the Fatal Five. And I have with me Elias Cabell, who plays Starboy. Yeah. Hi. I'm good. How are you doing? Good. You having a good day? Yes. Excellent day. Nice t-shirt. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what is different for Starboy when he gets into the 21st century versus the 31st century? Oh, a lot. There's a lot. But um, primarily the... The, the cataclysm of a lot of the heroes that he is a, a part of are still around. And they're, they're not in its infancy. They are at the, I suppose, the, the purple patch. Um, so he goes back to save them, to help save them, because he knows what awaits their future and all superheroes' futures as a consequence of what's happening in his present. Yeah. So he has a little bit of a mental health issue when he gets into the 21st century. Why is that? Well, he actually has a... Um, <clears throat> the, the seeds are, exist at the start of when he's 3,000 years ahead in his present. And he realizes that his power diminishes unless he takes medication. Um, so that is rendered... The same, the same problems are rendered when he goes back to the 21st century and he seeks this... <laughs> This piece of medication, and that's that's one that's one of the tools I think that the writers must have used to try to, I suppose, lace in little clues about how he relates to the team and how he, I suppose, leaves the breadcrumb and the trail of where she comes from, Our Lady, the Green Lantern. Right. So Jessica Cruz and El and Starboy. Uh, sort of share uh, a vulnerability as a superhero. What do you think about the TV or movie showing superheroes with vulnerabilities? Well, I think that's, you know, this is just my subjective um, feeling on, on what really effective narrative does. People who are superheroes, <coughs> the reason why they connect to so many people on, on, on such a large, vast in such a really, really empathic way is because they have that vulnerability, you know, and they have incredible powers in certain ways, but we are allowed to communicate and feel that we could be them or we could display some form of the hero's journey, you know, and, and seeing that manifested truly when they get into, into a, say, an, an event or a cataclysm that, that really, really shapes their existence and shows their true vulnerability, I think that's why... That's why these, these, these heroes are so relatable, even though they have these, they can move rocks or whatever, you know? I think that's one of the defining reasons why the, why the superhero genre, in a way, is such a huge, hugely relatable and such a big market. Yeah. I want to thank you for joining us here at, at WonderCon for Justice League versus the Fatal Five. Thank you. Thanks for talking to me, mate. Cheers, mate. doing? Increasing the mass, making the steel stronger. What about your meds? Did you take them? I will. Thomas, look at me. Look at me. You miss only a couple of doses and it won't work anymore. You'll get worse. You'll never be able to think straight again. You won't be in the Legion. Not true? I forgot. I tried to find my medicine. It wasn't here. It doesn't exist. We're losing the connection. Thomas, please. Never forget, never forget, never forget, stupid, stupid. Oh.